Thanks for staying with us now. Small and medium-sized enterprises encounter many challenges and complexities in running and growing their businesses. At the very core of every business is its ability to take in revenue and to secure its supply of inventory and other inputs. Significant value can be unlocked for, uh, for SMEs by making or receiving payments strategically in a manner that attracts reward, improves working capital, um, drives efficiency or optimizes um, processes. Both buyers and sellers can benefit a bit differently from more modern digital payment capa uh, capabilities such as card-based platforms that are now emerging. Now SMEs now have options and opportunities to disguise or dis um, digital digitize their payment um, processes. Overall, digital card based payments represent an increasingly important opportunity for SMEs to improve the operations of their business. So how has the evolution of payment uh, platforms impacted SMEs? That's our question tonight. Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. I'll bring in Moses in a minute or two. I just wanted to hear your thoughts. You know, what do you think um, the impact of payment solutions? How has it impacted um, SMEs or the evolution of payment solutions? I think that, in fact, it's so huge. Mm -hmm. Like, it's very huge. If you want to, and I'm not the expert, so <laughs> for Moses, but my opinion. If you want to think back from the days of when people used to carry money in Ghana must go because they want mm. to go oh travel to Remind Lagos to buy stuff, mm. or um, people have to make sure that they go to their own bank to deposit money so that someone else somewhere can get it. You know, coming from that to just the press of the button is mm. evolutionary. So I can sit in my house and set up a payment system as mm -hmm. a Kanimo without even registering my business mm. and transact. It's you know, we don't think about how these things happen. You mm. know, it's such a fact. It just happens. And then you don't know that we have evolved through different steps. And I like the part where you said that. <laughs> no more messy. You know, a lot of times it's always being posited check. Yes! Very ah, fast. Jennifer sells, she sells market. Let me hear her thoughts. <laughs> Do people owe <call> you? <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> and I, I, love you the, can. I love the fact that technology has played a very huge role. You know how you enter some a shop and you see no credit till they come tomorrow? Mm. I mean, I don't have to do that. You just know that, see, it's when you pay, that's when you get your goods. Mm -hmm. It's when you actually, okay, you, you, you come to me, you tell me, okay, this is what you want, okay, well, I'll keep waiting. I'm not going to make any move. I'm not going to package your product until payment has been done. Mm -hmm. And I love what um, the payment platforms have been doing this days. They have just made everything very seamless. Yes. You just put in your card details, money goes from your account to the next account, or you just need to do, okay, I've, I've made payment. But for those of us who don't have not um, incorporated or have not um, put our businesses on these platforms where we have to use um, these payment platforms like Paystack and Flutter Wave, we still have to do the whole um, one-on-one -on -one transaction but for bigger platforms where you already have the payment platforms on it's pretty easy you you're not saying you're not you don't have to send screenshots or proof of payment or anything the company just gets it directly yes. oh they've gotten your payment then you yes. automatically get a receipt in your email or you get an sms stating that oh you make payments and this will be delivered to you also so they so it, it's actually amazing and I, I really cannot wait to see how far or how much we can evolve in the next five ten years to come absolutely all right, so I'm going to bring in our guest, uh, Moses um, Sule is a graduate of Electrical Electronics Engineering. How you entered finance, I don't know. <laughs> and an alumnus of the Lagos <laughs> Business School with 15 years work experience covering cash management, digital and transaction banking, mobile and electronic banking across financial institutions, payment providers and mobile money operators such as Standard Bank, Paga, Sterling, Flutterwave, um, and um, Orandian, I think that's the name. Moses is currently the VP online business and retail of, um, acquiring. In what organization now? Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. 
Ah, you boy, the one cashing out now. Wow. <laughs> thanks, thanks. So you can bill him. No, because yeah, I can bill him. <laughs> How do you know? I'm just going to give you. No, we don't collect checks. I'll no, give you a transfer. No, I'll no, give, no, no. I'll give you do, do me a transfer <laughs> right after the show. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining us. There's a backstory to Moses uh, coming on this show. I mean, we do not take it for granted. Okay. He was supposed to be here last week, um, but because of the flood and everything. But thank you again thanks, you know, for making the so commitment well. to be here. Thanks, All right, so um, we were. We're talking the evolution of payment solutions and its impact on SMEs, right? Because it seems like when we speak like this, we're speaking grammar. People do yeah. not understand the extent mm. at which this evolution has truly impacted even the market woman selling vegetable yeah. in the market. You know, before, you must have money before you go must anywhere. Yeah. But now, I have so so much confidence. I can't remember what I bought with you. Did. Said, oh, no, I was going to wash my car. Yeah. I was going to wash my car. Yeah. I said to my wallet, I thought uh, I had yeah, cash. a thousand or two thousand naira, man. Yeah. And the car wash is just a thousand naira. Yeah. I got to the car wash, I said, please, I hope you collect I, yeah. a transfer. Yeah. He said, of course, madam. <laughs> so do you understand how the, the burden has been just dropped off of your head that you're not thinking I must carry money, you know. So anywhere you go, so, so tell us the impact. Because sometimes people do not understand that this thing is actually huge. Yeah. They just think that it's just, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, th thanks a lot. Um, um, I know AK and I, we've had some preliminary um, discussion. Um, I think we need to start from where you have fintech, fintech. So mm. let's even break it to the barest form. Um, fintech is financial technology, mm. and that means it's the use of technology to enhance financial services. Mm. So the use of technology to enhance financial services, that's one. Number two, we've always thought that fintech is synonymous to payment. Mm. Um, so that means financial services is not just payment, it's not just banking. It can be insurance, it can be lending, it can be whatsoever, pension and all of those stuff. Mm. I, I think one of the reasons why payment has also been, like because it's ubiquitous in the sense that you are a non-for-profit, you need to, you must make payment or receive money. Mm. You are a school, you must receive money from parents mm -hmm. and you must pay salary. Mm -hmm. You are a church, you receive money, Often. and so, like, <laughs> so. It's very important. Yeah, so <laughs> what it means is that at the heart of everything we do mm. is either you are receiving or making payments. Mm. So that is why it's super, so important. So mm. people will always say, are there other people doing things? Why is it only the fintechs that will raise $100 million, mm. $170 million, $200 million? So it tells you that because payment is super very and pivotal to what we do, um, so we will continually ride on those. Mm. That's the first part. The second part is, interestingly, you talked about post-data checks. And so <laughs> maybe six years ago, the one way you can apply for a loan Yes, yeah, so you must drop six, you must drop post data data checks. checks. <laughs> yeah. You drop post-data checks. Or, as a banker, maybe as a business, you want to take a loan, you want to even do fixed deposit. You can remember where every Monday you get raid guide. Raid guide is telling you, they send it to all the branches to say, this is how much percentage you can give. If a person is investing one million naira for 30 days, give him 2%. So mm -hmm. that raid guide, raid guide is sent across the bank. Um, we've seen fintechs coming to say, Tokenization. So let me just break tokenization. If you've taken an Uber ride before, mm -hmm. where you carry your card and you put in the application, your card is saved. So that at the point of payment, not like you bring your card to swipe on the POS, your card is already stored in the system. Mm -hmm. Your card has been tokenized. So a use case that we all know is Uber. Now, the two examples we just talked about, for savings or for taking loans, when you tokenize your card on the people who give loans today, you don't need to write the post data check. You also don't need your friend to come to the guarantor and give another 12 score. <laughs> so that card that is tokenized, on 30th, when you say your salary is paid, they, you're just, they just the system. Debit. So look at what FinTech has done here. If you write a post data check, Akanimo is supposed to present that check on 30th, mm -hmm. but she forgot. Mm -hmm. And chances is that, I saw money on first in my account, I spent it. That's I cannot went to present the check, there's <laughs> no money yes. there. Mm -hmm. So you find that that human side of 
are forgetting or she couldn't error. even go to the mm -hmm. bank as at that time to present those checks. A computer will not wait. On 30th, the computer will go to look for money and mm -hmm. pull money from that account. Mm -hmm. So tokenization is come to make it very simple. So new set of business is grown where you find out that the people who give loan, the real monies of this world, every one of them, mm -hmm. let's not, maybe mm -hmm. we don't want to call names, well, every one of them, they ride on those. If you don't took a savings, I don't need to go to the bank branch or I call, I can not say, please, I want to save. I cannot download an app, maybe a piggy vest or whatsoever. I can tokenize my card and say on 30 years because I'm paid my salary. 2, Take 2,000 naira and put, because for her, for us in the bank, when we want to do then, we we'll put a standing order. The first thing is that she's limited because she is in a bank. She has to put a standing order to debit her account to fund her children's savings account. Mm. This time around, it is ubiquitous, so it's agnostic. I don't need to be a part of this bank. I just have a debit card that can work anywhere. So mm. these are just two examples of what fintech is coming to do. Remember, fintech is financial um, technology. Finance, yeah, technology. Yeah, technology. Yeah, technology to mm. solve. Um, financial yeah, services, services or even to enhance, yes. Okay, so let's um, delve into the talk about SMEs, you know, and we've all, starting from what we've all explained and even Jennifer had contributed and said, how easy it is for you now as a small business to just open your store and collect money. But then again, you know, you've talked about FinTech, but you can see that the CBN has licensed other people, like the mobile money operators yeah. and the PSP. What is their role? Yeah. You get because right now MTN can mostly function as a bank, you know, and there are other people you've mentioned a few names that have been given those licenses. Yeah. What is the effect of those licenses on small businesses and also on their competition, which is the banks? Yeah, thanks. So let's start with the mobile money operators. For the mobile money operator, that means I can, without having to provide the KYC that is required to open a bank account, there is a Tier one, two, three KYC, where a person can come with his telephone number and his name to register a wallet account. That account can be treated like a bank account. Just that because we don't know so much about you, we will put a limit on what you can do. Mm. So the tier two means you've provided a means of identification, which is your face or bio, like your ID card. We now know you a bit better. That means we increase your limits to something higher. Tier three means we know your name. We have a means of identifying you. We also have a utility bill. That's the KYC part. Mm. You now take that person to tier three, which is similar to. So for the mobile money operators, that means the people who typically can't go to a bank to open an account, these people can open accounts from agents of the mobile money mm. operators. So that means the agents are distributed across the country. So I can walk up to an agent of any of the mobile money operator, for example, maybe OPE. You go to OPE agent somewhere in Damatu. You can create a tier one account because that is what you can provide. And so in that case, you are now entered into the system. Because here's the trouble. For the people who typically don't have any data point about them, sometimes they are faceless and nameless. Mm. The implication is that if you open your internet banking or your mobile banking application today, some banks will just tell you, you're eligible for five million, you're eligible to have loans. So you're not even asking. Imagine the guy or the trader who always keep money in their pocket. Nobody has any data point about them. Mm. And so in the future, these people cannot even assess loans. Even this, though they have the, even though they have they the capacity. Have so. so that means the data point of even you coming to create an account to be on a wallet account, mm -hmm. someone can now pay you into that account, you can receive money, your transactions can happen in that case. That first puts you even on the footing. And gives right you some footing. kind of record, record. for somebody mm. to even begin to have a conversation of yeah. including you in whatever financial solution. Yeah. Okay, let me come to you, Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer, are you there? Did we lose Jennifer again? Yes, I'm okay. okay. Hi, nice to meet you. Oh, sugar. See why we don't do Zoom? <laughs> <laughs> technology is... Oh. oh, technology is falling out. Yeah, and our network, network is a bit poor, a bit messy. Okay, so we're going to try to... Well, we're trying to reconnect with Jennifer. Um, 
SMEs play a very pivotal role in yeah. any economy, right? And we can't help to understand that it can only get better with SMEs, especially now that we have a lot of um, social media platforms, different platforms that you can just easily set up a small one-man business, yeah. right? And all of a sudden, you, you're able to sell globally, right, yeah. to different people across the world. Yeah. I mean, I remember one day I wanted to buy a batch. I went online to order a batch. Like, the, the things the that are happening. The convenience of yeah. the Jonathan, the convenience, you know. There is a logistic so, person that yeah. can deliver that so particular stuff. how can we leverage and build, you know, because it can only get better. So if, for instance, I am one SME, and I'm able to take maybe 10 employees based on the fact that my sales is growing um, um, sporadically online. Yeah. Um, AK comes again, she's able to employ 20 people because her own sales have gone off the roof. She needs to be able to manage orders and everything. Of course, there's tying that into logistics, tying that into so many things. Yeah. Yeah, there's, a, there's a chain that can really happen that we actually mop up unemployment because, I mean, today, World Bank released something very funny about um, unemployment in Nigeria. Yeah. So how do we harness all of these things and boost you know, the, uh, um, the, the small business so that we can actually create real-time jobs for a lot of people? Yeah, I, I think that's super, very fantastic. Um, like, I'll take it in two parts. We know that the people who maybe the, the payment gateway business today, um, six years ago, you, for you to get access to a payment gateway service, you needed to pay some money. 150,000 naira? You know the amount. <laughs> you needed to pay those monies, and they now send you code for you. Mm -hmm. So that means you need a developer and you to need pick somebody that code to, help you. Yes. to do those stuff. Mm. And six years ago, where five, six years ago, when the likes of Pesta Flutterwave came on board, you can go to any of their sites, create an account, copy the code snippet, okay, I'm still using techie stamp, uh, techie <laughs> jargons, and you put it on your website. It's now evolved to the point where you don't need to even have a website. Mm. So that means you can create an account, generate a link. What's the account? Your name is Uwa, Uwa mm -hmm. and Co. Mm. What bank do you want to receive your money in when you receive your what sales? You put the bank. Naira or dollar collection, Naira, that's all. You can create a payment link. With that payment link, for every time you want to receive money from people, send them the link. You can decide to say the link most. You can add code the amount into the link, or you can leave it flat. Mm. I can send you a link via WhatsApp. So we're talking about SMEs before we even mm. come to the people in the interlands. Mm. So for you, you don't have a website. You sell from the put off your vehicle, create a payment link. Sir, I see this particular cup, 1,000 Naira, you like it, okay, fine, send the link. Moses receives the link, puts his card, if he decides to want, if he wants to pay with bank account USSD, he can make that payment. You will get that notification. You can also go back to the dashboard. You've not done any website. You go back to the dashboard of that particular payment to a company. Log in and see all the transactions that is happened to you in your account. So, mm -hmm. somebody's done the heavy lifting, which is the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. It's already available. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, do whatever you want to do. As you display those fancy stuff on your WhatsApp story, somebody likes it. I like this particular gown. Send okay, I'm Send the link. Oh, guys, 2000 Naira. Put your 2000 Naira. I pay. I receive it. I go to the, I get the notification. I can go online to see whatever. You get a logistic service like you talked about. So if you already have logistic people you work with. So we are seeing that we're already creating value. Mm. But the first bit is somebody's breaking the barrier to entry, which is the payment part. Mm. It's been done. Let's pick it and take it from there. OK, you know what? let's quickly take a break. When we come back, I hear Jennifer is back now. So when we come back, we'll take Jennifer's question and we'll take some of your questions. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Now, if you just tuned in, we're having an amazing chat with Moses Sule on the evolution of payment platforms and its impact on SMEs. Now, let us share what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us on SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038 Technology, 
we still have issues with that. So I'll come to Moses on that. But let me come to Jennifer because Jennifer, you're back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hi, Moses. Nice to meet you. Thanks a lot, Jennifer. Okay, so my question is this here. Yeah, um, we know that the reason why um, some SMEs do not want to go digital. Oh, sugar. So, all this platforms is because they feel here and not for them. And I know that um, in recent times of, um, as a means of um, security, you know, when uh, before you make payment, they have to send you like your OTP to your SMS or to your email or, or, or whatever, depending on the platform that you're using. So what I want to ask, um, are they planning to make the security or are they planning to improve or evolve when it comes to the security aspect of the payment platforms? Okay, thanks. Thanks, Jennifer. So um, I think credits to the central bank um, that has also helped us. So for people who travel abroad, you find out that when you make some of these payments, you don't receive the OTP, the OTP as in one-time password. So that is typically what we call um, 2FA, two-factor authentication or 3D secure. What it means is that you have the card, which is something you have with you. You have the PIN, PIN to your whatever you can put, impute the PIN. And the third part is the OTP verifying that the person, because when you do transactions online, um, it's card not present transaction. That means I can pick Akanimo's card to go do transaction. So there is a need for us to be able to verify that Akanimo is the person that is doing this transaction. So OTP is sent as a third layer to verify that the person who's doing this transaction. So that framework is already available in Nigeria. That what it means is that for every time you do a web transaction, you must provide your card, your PIN, and also um, the OTP will be sent. The case of maybe Uber, the ride alien, alien service where you don't need to put your PIN. Someone has already gone to say, I will provide, um, no matter what happens, if a person comes to complain to mm. say my card was used, yeah. I will return the money. So that means that buffer has been created. That is the reason why maybe the central bank will permit such use case. But the ideal scenario is you must have 2FA or 3DS. 3DS, 3D secure. That Can we speak English, Mr. Moses? <laughs> two, okay, <laughs> two. <laughs> <laughs> two, two factor authentication. <laughs> so the two factor yes, authentication. Yes, oh, yeah, no, no, yeah. you do explain. You're the expert. So the, the two factor authentication, Jennifer. You are talking to tech today. No, I am not. A, I'm a business woman. I'm a market woman. Talk to me. So the two factor authentication says that you have the card. Yes, we know you have the debit card. You also know the pin to your card. That is not enough, because someone can go steal your card. Someone can guess your your PIN. Mm. But there must be something for us to verify that the person who is actually doing this transaction is you. It's you. So that means that is why the OTP is sent. OTP means one time password sent to that particular registered telephone number. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so those, um, it's important for this kind of framework to be available in Nigeria to help us. So that means for every time we talk to the traders, the people who are very afraid, mm. there is always the buffer to say, um, if, person t if they take your card, um, there is that protection that your card cannot be used, especially if you already keep your phone, except your phone has been compromised. If they've compromised your phone, that's why you have to go to the telco to block the line and all of those kind of stuff. Well, it's very important. I, I think one of the most important elements here is the advocacy so that we continue to make the people know that the more you continue to hide and say, I want to operate from the back of my car, collect my cash, put it under the bed, you are excluded. Mm. And that exclusion means someday you cannot apply for loan for your son to go to school. Mm. Someday nobody can make any decision about you to say, we can give you grants. So um, why you have been afraid? Somebody sold us a dummy to say they will steal your card or they tell like, more, the bank, if you put 1,000 Naira, when you come back, everything will now become zero. They will now take all your money. Like, we continue to hand out those kind of fables. But a time will come when we need to tell the people, like, there is protection for you. Mm -hmm. There is consumer protection from central bank. If True. there is anything like this, you can cry foul. Mm -hmm. But the, the importance of you coming out for you to have a digital footprint 
by far outweighs sometimes the fear, the fear. that we've sold. Like, mm. hey, if you bring your business online, they will come and hack okay. your account and steal the stuff, yes. Okay, so I like the story so far. And you know, one of the things I realized when you talked about this payment system, especially the evol evolution, is how the different financial systems have taken into cognizance the challenges of SMEs. Yes. So they took away the infrastructure that not everyone would know technology, and it keeps getting simpler Simple. and simpler. Now, what I want you to dis want us to discuss is the effect of COVID on payments, mm. because I see that there has been significant improvement. So you tell us about it. You know, you're, you're the one that the effect of of COVID on payment is it has it been positive or negative? Yeah, it's it's been super positive. So um, let's start with you. You were talking about maybe grandma needs to travel every now and then, and COVID happened, and they say nobody's traveling for six months. So your tickets, you can't go to even Ibadan to see your grandchild. Grandma who we thought, grandma is not a digital native. Digital native because grandma's era, they did not. Digital native, our children, they grew up having phones and they already know these things. Mm. So grandma that we used to be afraid of, mama, grandma cannot do anything. Grandma now can do WhatsApp video. Mm. Maybe the first time she tried it, mommy bend the screen so that we can see your face is showing the back. <laughs> but today she can do it so very well. Mm -hmm. And so it tells you like we continue to make decisions about people based on the imperatives we know about them in the past. A typical example would be during COVID where they say you can't go to the market maybe on Tuesday and when you go to the market, you ask somebody or <laughs> Mr. Moses who has always done cash. I can't go to the bank to withdraw because even the banks, like, no, I can't go to withdraw. The only way I can pay you today is to transfer to your account. Mm -hmm. And you say you don't have any means you to accept that. digital you payment, that, you yeah. lose that sale. Mm -hmm. So you now find out that people gravitated towards the people who had digital footprint that, mm. okay, I can transfer to you, okay, you don't get POS, okay, give me your account. You gave that example. Mm -hmm. So you find that, that people- car wash. Yeah, yeah car wash. Like, just so, transfer Sorry, just to add, even, you know the plantain sellers on the road, mm -hmm. they would collect transfer from you, try it. Yes. Yeah. They will, actually. Yeah. So that, <laughs> That's the one hawking, you know? Yes. yes. The one hawking, yes. You know? <laughs> yes. So that is growth. So, so wow. in, the, in the old Things times, yeah, in the old times, we, like, there is a fantastic book, Crossing the Chasm, and uh, Chasm. Um, when you put technology product out there, the first thing you're looking for is early adopters. Early adopters will be the guys like Akanimo that say, oh, this wristwatch is out. Like, we'll be the first to get it. Like, no matter how much it will cost, we'll get there. Because they are digital, uh, like, they are the early adopters. But today, everyone, there is no gap. Like, we just need to adopt it to survive. So if you want to sell, you have to. If you want to receive money, you have to. So you find out that, that COVID has truly helped us to accelerate the things that we thought could not happen. Look at our children. They can do webinar. Like, we thought we were the only ones who could do Zoom calls. And they say, you have to travel to Ibadan. OK, can I, I don't want to go. Let's do Zoom calls. Now, children can stay for entire time. Like, they can learn digitally online. Okay. So you don't find out that we are, the acceleration is moved. You're afraid to go to the hospital. You can now embrace electronic medical record, as in EL solutions, where you can talk to the doctor and you get whatever, you can pay digitally. So you find out that that transition is moving. It's not just even in terms of payment. It is how you want to be served. So in COVID mm -hmm. times, everyone is afraid. I want to talk to a doctor. I don't need to go there physically. I can use my phone and I can Absolutely. pay. Yeah. Okay, so let me take some comments. Uh, Ike, I think you have a, a comment as well. Okay. It says, this is Austin from Delta. Um, yes, digital payment is good, but please ask your guests to convince a shop owner who got scammed in the process. <laughs> um, actually, who got scammed in the process? Actually, I was aware that a woman lost money in Asaba because she received false alerts. Mm. Uh, only to discover after the departure of the supposed customer or mm. the supposed customer. So what, what do you... Yeah. <laughs> So, so How do you convince I, that kind of a person? Yeah, I, I, I truly can mm, um, relate. So, yes. Uh, so, for there is, that is the reason why we also need to have um, point of sale terminals. So, when you have a POS terminal, a customer is coming to swipe their card. The only time you can give is when it's printing and tells you successful mm. or it's declined. Mm. So, 
it is not somebody triggering uh, yeah, maybe you know, false SMS. Your POS yeah. um, devices are down. Yeah. They don't work, and you know you have to make that sale. Yeah. So we resort to actually transfers, online yeah. transfers. So that means for people like that, when you receive the SMS alert, mm. you need to now go Log to your to your bank. Your mobile banking application. And I know some SMEs that do that. So when they see your alert, yeah. you send them your alert, they would wait yeah. for their own notification, notification from their bank or they log into their app. They log into the app to, to check that. They're able to check. Yeah. So I think it's, that's the best thing. Yeah, to it's, it's, it's thing. better to be safe than that's to be sorry. True. So that means, oh, I'm very, very sorry. Please, well, let's just hold on a little. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think that customers are understanding. So the evolution has come to stay, but it needs to be upgraded to match what is going on in other clans. <laughs> Great program. You have on Plus TV, God bless you guys, Bobby Kennedy, Jalingo Taraba State. Hi, Thank Bobby. Thank you. Um, Adela so Moses take, saying something on this because I do not agree that yeah. our, tech, our payments, yeah. if there's anything that we yeah. have advanced way beyond all the, the SENA claims is, yeah. is payment. Yeah, mm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. so no, no, no. Yes, yeah, you, can, you can. You can do that. Do that. Do that. Do that. Do that. Yeah, do that. Yes. <laughs> so, have you ever received, maybe when you receive, a notification that your global bank they now can send you SMS alerts is something that is fantastic. Yes. Mm. Uh, have you been stranded when you go to any other, like you go to a country where yes, no. they can't, and you can't also do your P2P <laughs> transfer, which is the transfer that less than a minute the person gets alert. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So because NIPS is coming to say Nuban, um, Nigeria, um, the unified bank account. So that means um, we're talking. There was a time where some banks will have 17 Inter digits. Yes, interstate so, banks couldn't. Yeah, some banks will have eight digits, so they uh, unified every one of us. Really and so we have 10 digits. So mm -hmm. that means when you want to do transfer, it will bring the name, like mm -hmm. to verify that the name, this is the person you mm -hmm. sent. It's not available in many of the markets. Wow. Like, it's not available. Well, like internet global is, markets. Internet yeah. is uh, an affluent or HNI propositions yeah. in some of these countries, mm -hmm. European and American countries, that are maybe. Uh, economic wise, they're, they're better than us. But in terms of payment, Nigeria is is so really yeah. we are we are yeah. Please, uh, yeah. is it from Jalingo? What's your name yeah. again? Just just <laughs> to also just to help um, our friend from Jalingo. Bobby, yeah. Bobby Kennedy, we are doing well. Yeah. That's what he's saying. We are doing so, well. <laughs> so Bobby, Bobby, to also help so that we also bring those things to closer home, closer to you, um, and that is why you find out that mobile money operators, even the banks, have distribution network where. Um, they have point of sale terminal closer home. So because for in some areas where you don't have the bank, the fancy, like the banks we have, or you need to travel long distance to get access to the ATM to withdraw, agents are not getting closer. Uh -huh. That's in plenty of everywhere. It's yes. everywhere. It's, it's, a, yes. it's another source of, yeah. it's another source of income. Yes. Yes. It's another yes. So you just, they charge you maybe 200 naira on yes. your withdrawal. It depends yeah. on the money, actually. They charge you yeah. based on how much you are yeah. withdrawing. But let me come to Jennifer. I hope we still have her. So we just have one final um, oh, no, question. Yes, have one question. Uh, yes, Jennifer, gonna... are you there? Ha. This is what we're losing Jennifer left hand. Okay, so I was going to ask about international payments because yes. we have advanced. So local payment, we seem to have conquered it. And every time we're looking at getting better but what about international payments how what is stopping us from crossing that barrier because some people still have to go to maybe a particular bank or some other um, use PayPal to be able to do this so it's not easy to, to do that what <laughs> this is raising his eyebrows yes He's so, smiling now yeah so the truth of it is um for for our friends in the diaspora yeah, especially even the guys in the bank when there is FX, mm. you typically want to use the FX to support importation and all of those things. So if I'm buying something from America, somebody needs to support my Naira with a dollar. Mm. That means the bank, there is no dollar around. So mm. that means we need to leverage um, the dollar that is available to the bank. And so when we now begin to place a premium. I think the importation will now say prioritize. Where medical equipment needs to come, food needs to come. So mm. you want to buy jeans, you want to buy an iPhone, you want to play for those particular stuff. But the future we are looking forward to is one where um, we will not talk about digital currencies and all of those stuff, but a time will come when 
acceptance and issuance will meet. So mm. acceptance we means the places where you can use that particular thing. Mm. The issuance is you have a debit card. Mm. You are walking around with your debit card. You can't see any place to swipe. Mm. You have the debit card that's issued, but the acceptance is where to use it. Yes. So maybe the digital currency someday where they can now say, with your digital currency, you can pay for yeah, Apple that. Music and all of those stuff. That means it will generate enough issuance that will meet with, with acceptance. The acceptance. So, but as long as it is maybe using your debit card, it is eased on the dollar, the, the dollar that is not so, available. So, uh, Rosalind says, please ask your guests, how do we know fake alerts? Because your name appears, but money will not drop. So, you see this fake alert? Yeah, thing? yeah. Money will not drop it to your account. I think Moses has answered it yeah. when he but, said but, that. You must ensure that even though the person has done the transfer, just tell the customer, please hold on a minute and log into your mobile app. Yeah. If the money has dropped in your account, it will be reflecting as a, a part of your activity. Your like transaction, your activity. Yes. yes. But I wanted to add, another thing in the, the first task don't know is your outstanding balance that you had in your account. Mm. It takes a lot, except the person is an insider to know the balance that you had. So some people just rush to see the amount that had been alert. paid and then they the name. The, they don't yeah. check Final the balance. balance. So that's How another thing that up. can help yeah. you. Mm. If you check the balance that you had, if it corresponded, and then obviously, two, two factor authentication, <laughs> log on to your app and, <laughs> and find out that the balance yeah. is there. Oh, but, well, but the future yeah, we truly, word, yes. yeah, the future <laughs> we truly look forward to will be that future where Moses that is in Jalingo is received money from his brother mm. from Lagos. Rather than go to the agents to go cash out that money, because that's still cash, mm. to go to the bread seller mm -hmm. to buy bread, that's cash in the system. Mm. Electronic started, we close, mm. we close the book with cash. cash. Mm. The future will be the point where the bread sellers, the plantain seller, mm. will have a means of accepting money electronically. Hmm. So we're at that point where maybe the cost, when you want to maybe accept, they say it's 1,000 Naira mm -hmm. MSC that is taken. When we get to a point where it becomes so micro, maybe five Naira for every, maybe two Kobo for every five Naira kind of say, then you find out that we will have more people accept the digital part. Hmm. The second phase will now be micro insurance so that people can get access to healthcare. Mm. So that is why you have to be digital so that someday the big companies can say, we know your we pattern. We want to mop you guys up and put, create a plan for you. That is cheap. The insurance, mm. like someday you're not going to be there as the farmer. Mm. There must be micro insurance for you. Mm. So save small money based on this particular stuff. You can have access to some money. Mm. Save some, so like all of those can, that's the future we are always looking forward to, not just. Uh, Looking yeah. forward to bring you you back. So uh, by the time we're inside that future, we will not say we told we you. Don't. So. <laughs> thank you so much. No, I mean, thanks, I've thanks. had an amazing conversation <laughs> thanks, and thanks, an amazing Laura. time with you. Thanks. Thank okay. you. You agree with me, right? I agree with you. Totally, <laughs> absolutely agree with you. And I just want to add and say that. You know, the evolution of payment is so fundamental to access to finance for SMEs. Yeah. It's the point of data collection. The more it gets better with people collecting, the ease of collecting this payment, mm. the easier it is to access finance. So Absolutely. embrace it. Embrace if you have it. To it. People will not be stealing from you if it wires straight to your account. To your account. That's true. We, we didn't even get to talk about it. Yeah. Just a lot yeah. to talk about. We have a lot to talk about. Yes. Yes. We'll definitely bring you back. Thank you. I hope you come back again no, I'll, to spend I'll time with us. Very honored. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, AK. Thank you, Jennifer. Even Thank though I cannot find you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram. Is at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, we're planning a huge giveaway just to say thank you to you for watching and believing in the Waze brand and following the conversation. So do well to follow us right now. Follow us now. It's at Waze Show Africa. Like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch and follow as well. Now, if you missed today's quote, it's our very long quote. Here it is again. <laughs> the evolving social and digital media platform and highly innovative and relevant payment capabilities are causing seismic changes in cost, uh, consumer behavior and creating equally disruptive opportunities for businesses. I mean, you've learned so much about all the opportunities that are available, so please make sure you queue in. Until next time, we'll bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy your evening. <laughs>